In today's painting, I hit an interesting roadblock. I forgot how much cropping would happen when framing this painting and realized that my subject's head was going to run into the top edge of the frame. The result is that I had to totally resize the model's head and in the process repaint almost her entire face. And this was after I thought the painting was done. So while I was wading through this tedious repainting, I couldn't help but reflect on the disadvantages of traditional painting compared to what I used to be able to do when I worked almost 100% digitally. But the fact is that I did decide to make that switch from digital to traditional, and I'm really happy I did. So for any of you who do work digitally and don't whip out your charcoal or your pencils or your paints very often, this video is going to illuminate how working traditionally can really improve your digital skills. And for traditional artists who aren't familiar with Photoshop and its contemporaries, I want to talk about some of the extraordinary advantages of digital tools and painting workflows. To start, I want to give a little bit of background on my experience with both media. I started working in Photoshop and later Procreate for the iPad because at about the time I was getting more serious uh, about my art, uh, which was probably in high school for me, DeviantArt was in its heyday. And digital painting along with concept art and illustration, career paths were getting a lot of exposure on that platform. I had no idea what I wanted to do for a career, but these seemed like really attractive options. I would get to paint all day, plus I'd get a good salary and benefits. I figured it was the best of both worlds, the creativity of painting and the stability of a corporate environment. So I began to learn Photoshop, and I kept using it and learning until pretty recently. For the record, I'm going to say Photoshop from here on out in the video probably, but there are a lot of new amazing programs coming out on the scene like Procreate or Clip Studio Paint, but for all intents and purposes, I'm going to group them all together for simplicity. So when I say Photoshop, just know that they're interchangeable for the purposes of this discussion. So diving right in, here are some of the most awesome reasons that you should give Photoshop or other digital painting programs a try and see if it might fit into your workflow. Number one is the low cost of materials after your initial investment. So no more restocking paint, canvases, brushes. It's just the cost of your computer or your tablet and then the cost of the program you're using. Number two is that it's portable. If you paint on a laptop or a tablet, packing up your entire digital painting setup fits only into a small portion of an already pretty small backpack. Meanwhile, packing up all my oil paints requires a full-size checked suitcase. Number three is lots of flexibility for experimenting. With software, you can always revert to a previous save if you realize you overworked a painting or just tried something out in your painting and it wasn't working. Number four is the ability to work in layers, which means you have the ability not just to adjust the most recent parts of a painting, but you can basically go back in time and even adjust the underpainting or the whole composition without having to erase details or color that you may have added on top. Number five is photo manipulation tools like perspective warping, adjustment tools, and liquify make it very easy to drastically block in or change an image extremely quickly and easily. Finally, number six is undo. Ever accidentally make a horrible brush stroke in completely the wrong place that would ruin the painting? The magic of Photoshop can make it so that never happened. Every now and again, I catch a wet brush on the completely wrong part of an oil painting and really wish Undo were an option. So Photoshop was awesome, but here was the catch. I wasn't really well suited to concept art or illustration at all. It took me a lot of years of trying to expand my skill sets to realize that concept artists aren't really there to be digital painters like the splash art you see in video games. They're there to generate visually interesting ideas. 
So you need to be the kind of person that dreams up costumes or weapons or cars or environments or creatures or monsters one after the other after the other. If you're a great concept artist, that's probably something you already spent all your time doing before you were ever hired. You liked dreaming up new things and things no one had ever seen before, things you couldn't literally 100% reference. And don't get me wrong, I drew all the time. It just wasn't stuff out of my imagination. I'd draw people or things or do studies of other drawings in my sketchbook. I was always looking at something in front of me, not something in my head. And yes, there are concept artists like Craig Mullins who are exceptionally brilliant painters and produce amazing painterly pieces totally digitally. But those probably aren't the pieces he was paid to make. The paintings you make for a game or a movie studio are there to be functional and fast, not something that shows off how painterly or artistic you can be. So I decided to explore illustration because the point of illustration was to actually make paintings for the sake of it. You weren't designing character sheets that would never leave the studio. You were making art that was meant to be seen fully. Sure, you were generally a freelancer rather than an employee of a studio, but you worked for big companies. So again, the career seemed more dependable. Except, yet again, this just wasn't the art I was well-suited to make. There were a lot of illustrators who could make beautiful, loose, expressive paintings. My teacher, Greg Manchess, is one of those painters. But incredibly tight, over-explained painting is in much greater demand. And while illustrators use a ton of reference, there was still this element of imagination that didn't quite feel intuitive to me. For example, because illustration uses some imagination, I noticed that a lot of the time the lighting was much simpler than the richness you can get in fine art paintings because in fine art you're observing and able to copy natural light in all of its complexity. I found that even the most talented artists, though, can't invent lighting that's more nuanced than what nature provides. And I was just too interested in understanding those parts of light to give that up. Thankfully, while I was Greg's student, he encouraged me and all of my classmates to work traditionally whenever possible. And this really paved the way for me to make the transition from illustration to fine art. Any time one of his students could have made something in oil instead of Photoshop, he asked that student why they didn't. I think to him, it would encourage us to make more visually interesting work and not use Photoshop as a crutch. That being said, though, I forget the exact reasons for this emphasis, but in taking Greg's advice and trying out oil painting again, it really opened my eyes to all that I had neglected. So here are my top reasons why you should totally give traditional painting or drawing a try. Number one, it just works the way you expect. With Photoshop, I spent a ton of time attempting to mimic traditional media. I used digital brushes that looked like pencil or charcoal or paint, but it looked repetitive and mechanical. Some artists have managed to push the tools beyond this point, but at their best, they just look like traditional media and... I know that setting up an individual Photoshop brush set or tools or workflows to achieve that takes a ton of tedious time and work. Trust me, I tried. Meanwhile, pulling out a brush or stick of charcoal, I get a novel, interesting stroke every time. And with paint, I get beautiful, transparent effects that software isn't quite capable of producing well. For instance, many transparent pigments of oil paint actually shift hues when transparent. There are ways to replicate this in Photoshop, but it's kind of cumbersome and artificial. It's much more fun to just lean in to the natural advantages of the paint itself. Number two is there's an original piece to sell. 
when you make work that people want to put on their walls, there's a real monetary advantage to being able to market an original piece of art in addition to print reproductions. Number three is that it's much easier to resist the urge to make super tight paintings. With Photoshop, you can zoom all the way in and then one step further and create perfectly smooth gradients, sharp lines, or razor-thin details. Resisting the urge to go overboard can be a real challenge. So if loose or energetic paintings are your goal, Photoshop can really get in your way. And number four is that you are forced to embrace and learn from a lot of challenges. No undo button means you learn to repaint things quickly and easily without getting super stressed out about it. Painting without a photo means you're able to roll with the light shifting or your model moving. Just like experienced painters can tell who is painted from life and who hasn't, I imagine the same is true for an artist who has worked traditionally versus one who hasn't. But here's the thing. If you're a fine artist, you probably don't need to be told to use traditional media. But you might learn a lot from being able to quickly and easily try out new compositions in Photoshop or might enjoy a digital plein air painting if packing up all your painting supplies just isn't in the cards one day. And if you're an aspiring concept artist or illustrator, getting great at traditional painting can show you what effects you want to try and achieve back in Photoshop. It can make you a more flexible artist who can use Photoshop's tools without being overly reliant on them. Or maybe you're just like me. You're a fine artist at heart who, in trying traditional painting, discovers just how much you love making one-of-a-kind pieces of artwork. In this portrait, it would have been so helpful to simply lasso my subject's face resize it, and make some small adjustments to blend everything in. But in having to repaint her face, since this is not Photoshop, as I walk back through this footage, I actually think I like my second pass at this portrait a lot better. And I was really surprised by how quickly I was able to paint everything in the second time around. It really makes me reconsider some of my painting habits and mindset and wonder if I wasn't so slow on the first pass because I simply didn't think it was okay to finish a painting that quickly. When I realized that the entire size of my composition was off, I really did panic at first and kind of lament or wish that I could go back to Photoshop somehow. But the truth is, it really wasn't as big of a deal as I thought it was, and I'm really grateful for all of the skills and just attitude toward painting that I've developed since making this change. I know this video just scratches the surface of what's possible in both digital art and traditional drawing and painting, so I want to hear from you. Do you have any big pros or cons to digital versus traditional that I missed? Or do you too switch from one medium to the other? Let me know in the comments because I wanna hear from you. And in the meantime, go ahead and like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that other painters can find this video too. If you're interested in any of the supplies that I used to make this portrait, I've included the links in the description. And if you're interested in commissioning a portrait like this one, I've included a link to more info on that in the description as well. I will be back on Thursday with a new painting video, but in the meantime, thank you for watching. Happy painting.